Peggy, it's two o'clock in the morning. I know, but this is an emergency. I really don't know what to do. I think Bud has lost his mind. Well, Peggy, don't worry. I'm sure all Bud needs is a man to talk to. Where can we find one? Where can we find one? Al, have you seen a man? No, but I've seen a woman who can make one sterile. <laughs> Look, uh, Peggy, maybe you're overreacting. You know, he's right. Maybe Bud's just going through a normal phase. Don't talk to me that way, Bud Bundy. Who are you calling Bud Bundy? <laughs> Maybe you should just seal him up now and cut your losses. <laughs> Jefferson, go down and talk to the boy. Why me? Why can't Al do it? If your car is a pacer, <laughs> press 61. <laughs> if your car is a Studebaker, press 62. Well, how about Kelly? She's working the late shift at the diner. It's up to you, Jefferson. But Marcy, he's nuts and he could be dangerous. <laughs> You go down there. You're the one with the million dollar life insurance policy. What million dollar life insurance policy? We'll talk later. I gotta go help out the boy. Hi there, bud. Hey, your, mo your mother says there's a little something that's bothering you. How about talking to old Jefferson about it? He thinks I'm not cool. <laughs> well, we can't have that. <clears throat> now, see here, Mr. Horsey. <laughs> Bud Bundy is a friend of mine. You be nice to him, or there'll be no oats for you. Please give me oats, Mr. Horsey. <laughs> be mean to Bud. <laughs> there, Bud. I've taken care of it. You know what I used to do when I was your age and I was feeling down and out like this? They'd get me a woman. And we'd do it like animals in the car. <laughs> it always made me feel better. You should try it, Bud. Here, it's on me. <laughs> Just make sure it stays on you.